Loop checking is an essential process to ensure the control loop from the DCS, distributed control system, to field instruments functions properly before commissioning. It begins with reviewing key documents such as loop diagrams, PNIDS, the instrument index, wiring diagrams, and the I.O. list. These help identify signal paths and confirm loop details. Next, Check the power supply to make sure 24 VDC or the required voltage is reaching all field devices like transmitters and valve positioners. Without proper power, signals won't transmit correctly. Then, verify cable continuity using a multimeter, checking the wiring from DCS to marshalling panels, junction boxes, and field devices. Ensure correct terminal numbers and signal polarity, especially for analog signals that I in the fourth step simulate input signals to test how the DCS responds. Use a loop calibrator to simulate 4 to 20 milliampere signals for transmitters, trigger switches manually, and simulate resistance or millivolts for temperature sensors. Watch the DCS to ensure the readings appear correctly. Then, check transmitter output by applying actual or simulated process values and confirming that the correct signal, scaling, tag, and units are displayed on the DCS. The sixth step is to check control output from the DCS. Put the loop in manual mode and send commands, 0% to 100%, to the valve, then observe valve movement and feedback. After that, perform a functional test under process or simulated conditions to verify interlocks, alarms, control logic, and PID tuning. Finally, complete the documentation by recording results in a loop test sheet and getting sign-offs from the responsible engineer, QA, slash QC, and the client. Throughout the process, use proper PP, label terminations, and stay in communication with the DCS operator. Following these eight steps ensures your control loop is safe, reliable, and ready for operation.